YouTubers, it going the Godows is back predicting the rookie of the year for every single NFL team in 2024, starting with AFC East teams, the Patriots. I got to go Drake May, even though there is a possibility they just start Jacoby Brissett and maybe they insist on keeping May on the sideline all year because they don't want to throw him in there yet because he is a little bit of a project, a little bit, even though I think highly of him. But I think he's just too talented to keep on the sideline, even for week one. you got to play him right away. So I'm going to bank on him playing and being the Patriots Rookie of the Year. Uh, my next bet would be for Jalen Polk, former Washington receiver. I think he'll get some action this year. They think highly of him. And if May's in there, I think he'd get even more action um, You know, because May can air it downfield, which Polk's good downfield. And some balls will be up for grabs with May, and Polk's pretty good contested catcher. Uh, on to the Buffalo Bills, I like Cole, B- Cole Bishop for them. And now I could I could flip Bishop and Coleman uh, if the Bills bring back Micah Hyde. But, yeah, but they can play a- alongside of each other because Hyde's a good free safety, Bishop a good strong safety. But there's just so much more to the safety room than with Mike Edwards and Taylor Rapp that it kind of limits Bishop snaps perhaps. So I could flip those if that's the case. Uh, if they bring Micah Hyde back, which sounds like he's going to play for the Bills or nobody. Uh, but I like Bishop's game. I, he's a big-time playmaker around the box. Uh, can, you know, Get in the backfield, get sacks, but he can be a playmaker on the ball as well, really good in zone, and he can man up on tight ends. So it's a type of guy that could be a rookie of the year type defender here. And then Keon Coleman, which you know, with Josh Allen, you know, you know he's going to be productive. Um, he could have some games where he's – you know, not consistently getting separation. I feel that's why I feel a little more comfortable with Bishop, but Coleman should be pretty productive for the Buffalo Bills as well. Helps that he has Josh Allen. For the Jets, they don't have like a clear cut option. A lot of guys that might be backups right away, but Malachi Corley uh, stands out. I think they'll have a lot of gadget plays. I think they'll, for him, and they'll have a lot of schemed up plays for him behind the line of scrimmage or, you know, short to in- intermediate routes. Uh, in, in that offense so and he'll be tough after the catch so uh, I think he's definitely their best bet to be their rookie of the year and then Braylon Allen uh, could, could get some action you know especially maybe around the goal line and, you know Brees Hall had an injury in the past I'm not really counting on, I'm counting on him being healthy I am counting on him being healthy but uh, I guess there's a shot that Allen could he be the starter all year at some point because of an injury I, I, I guess there's some sort of chance there uh, fashion, I think they kind of want to stash for now, which there could be injuries that put him in there, but I do think he could struggle if he's thrown in there early on. Dolphins, uh, you know, pretty good draft. They don't have an obvious one because some of these got all these good guys that they drafted could be backups for most of the year, depending on guys coming, other guys coming back and, you know, who's in, who's out. But I do like Chop Robinson and he could start right away because the injuries the Dolphins suffered last year, looking at a guy like Bradley Chubb. Uh, so Robinson should be pretty productive. Uh, you know, I look out for Jalen Wright as well. Uh, Mostert's a guy that, you know, could miss some time here and there. And Wright, Wright is more of your every down back or your starter back compared to eight, uh, to, compared to HM, but that doesn't mean they would start right over HM if Mostert was out, but I, I fits the Dolphins so well, he's going to hit some home runs here and I, I think he'll be pretty productive. So we'll see. Uh, next, the commander's got to go Jane Daniels, who's the second overall pick. He should be pretty productive. He could have his, he could have his ups and downs, uh, but Kingsbury offense should be pretty uh, pass-heavy, explosive. He's got some weapons, so he should win the commander's award for rookie of the year. I like Mikey Sainer still, though. I actually really thought about this one, believe it or not. I'd watch out for Sainer still as a kind of a dark horse for defensive rookie of the year in, in the league in general. Uh, because he is a big-time playmaker. He gets his hands on the ball. He's going to start in a slot for the Commanders for, for a really good defensive coach, and Dan Quinn. Could he be a slot version of Deron Bland, you know, big-time playmaker corner? So I like Sainer still. I like his odds. Like, I, you know, looking at his betting odds, like, it's worth putting a few bucks on, to be honest. Uh, but So the Commanders got some pretty good ones there. Uh, and that Ben Sinnott, I like a lot as well. He could be a very productive tight end right away. So they got a couple good options here. Uh, for the Giants, an obvious option, you have to go Malik Neighbors. He's going to be super productive. They're going to scheme plays up for him. He's going to catch the ball everywhere, uh, you know, everywhere on the field, downfield, underneath, wherever. Uh, and now I'd watch out for the running back from Purdue, Tyrone Tracy Jr., who by the end of the year or by 
early on he could be their starting or starting starting back or the most productive back really he's a former receiver so you know he can catch the ball out of the backfield as well which would be very important for this Brian Dayball offense but they had a couple DBs that I thought about as well the defensive backs like Phillips and Newbin they, they drafted so the Giants had some you know at the same time they had some good options it's obvious clear-cut Malik neighbors uh, for the Eagles battle between the two DBs their first two picks uh, I'm going to go with their second round pick, Cooper DeGeem, over Quinion Mitchell. Uh, both playmakers, both we expect to get their hands in the ball. I, I think the like small thing that can split these guys up that kind of did it for me, DeGeem's going to return some punts, like, and he can do that at a pretty high level, and that could kind of make him known as the Eagles' best rookie. I think it's a possibility. Uh, and they're going to find a spot to play him. Like, there's going to be times where he's playing at nickel, and there's going to be times where he's playing at safety, I, and, and he could play outside corner because that's where he played at Iowa. Um, you know, and is it going to be kind of a tough, like, pre-snap issue for offenses trying to read what he's doing? So I think that helps his case. Uh, Mitchell should start opposite of Slay, but, you know, Bradbury was he is a veteran. He was once good. So is there some competition for Mitchell? Um, and Mitchell could have a tough – transition trying to press because he didn't do it much of at all of that at, at, at Toledo but I think he's going to be good still right away he's going to be a playmaker I feel a little more comfortable with Cooper DeGeem who they trade up to get in the second round so interesting one there Cowboys I'm going to go an offensive lineman for the Cowboys I know the offensive linemen don't really win the the uh, actual rookie of the year award but just talk about the best rookie for each team uh, and, and I'm going to go Tyler Guy I think he's going to be good for the Cowboys they're really good what with offensive linemen in general, but I think he's going to be very solid for them at left tackle. Uh, the guy I'm watching out for as a linebacker, I think really fits Mike Zimmer's defense, and that's Maris Leofile from Notre Dame, like a flashy uh, type player, uh, rangy, high motor type guy. Uh, for the Bengals, I'll go Chris Jenkins. The Bengals don't have one that's like obvious, like yes, you know, because Mims probably going to start right away. He's a little bit of a raw prospect, and there's some durability issues there with him. Uh, or, or worries, I should say. It's not really a label for him yet. But Chris Jenkins should get some some good playing time, and he's a pretty pro-ready guy. Like, he's not super flashy, but he's going to do his job. He's going to stop the run, uh, you know, and he, and he can shed blocks. He can make plays. So and, and he should play alongside Sheldon Rankins a bit. So I'll go Jenkins. I watch out for Tanner McLaughlin, who I love. He's my tight end three in the draft. He's a, you know, he's got to be healthy because I know there's a little. he's got some sort of issue uh, it's why he dropped a little bit, but um, it's a weapon at the tight end position. The Bengals could use somebody like that, so I'll go with him as the guy to watch for here. For the Steelers, I'm going to go Roman Wilson. Love this one. He's kind of a dark horse for winning the actual Rookie of the Year award in the NFL because I think he's going to be a super productive rookie receiver right away. Very easy for him to be productive. Um, you know, It's just going to be if the quarterback sees him or not. Uh, but it's very easy for him to be productive because he's a plug-and-play slot receiver that finds soft spots and zones. Like He finds open lanes, he gets separation, catches the ball, and he moves the stick. So uh, he should be productive. I don't see how he wouldn't be. Uh, something terribly went wrong if he's not like even a little productive. So I like him, and, and I, I love their, their first-round pick as well, Troy Fatanu, uh, plug-and-play guy for left tackle. I think how productive Wilson will be at the receiver position, that's kind of more of a rookie of the year type guy there uh, for Pittsburgh. But I'm excited. I'm excited for what they brought in. Browns, I go Michael Hall Jr. And the Browns are tough too. They don't. They don't have an obvious one. They didn't have a first round pick, but they had a pretty decent draft. For not, it's not a, the flashiest draft, but they had a pretty decent draft. I don't view them as, as of having any misses. Michael Hall Jr. I love actually. It just does he have to put a little more size and strength down before they put him on the field yet, but. I think he'll be used on passing downs, and he can be quite productive. I think he'll be more productive getting after the quarterback in the NFL than he was in college. Maybe it's not right away. And then, you know, Louisville receiver Jamari Thrash. You know, if somebody, if they need a receiver to step up, I mean, it's a guy that gets separation. He can catch the ball a little more consistently, I wish. But um, he gets separation. He's pretty athletic. So uh, that could be a sneaky guy for the Cleveland Browns. Ravens have, they had a good draft. They had quite a few I can put up here. Uh, I put Nate Wiggins, their first round pick, uh, at the top. He's got to stay healthy, but he's, if he is, I think he'll be pretty, a uh, pretty good playmaker. I think he gets his hands on the ball. I mean, it helps if you're playing opposite of Marlon Humphrey and you got Kyle Hamilton out there causing problems. 
Uh, so Wiggins should get his hands on the ball. The only thing with him is like thin frame, multiple pass injuries, injured at the combine. So will he stay healthy all year? That's kind of the Ravens thing, you know, with their players. But I'll go Nate Wiggins. I think Roger Rosengarten's going to start. I think he's pretty solid. He could, have, he could have his ups and downs. I think Isaac could honestly start because they need a pass rusher. I, I'd say he probably doesn't start right away, but he'll probably play. Uh, but I'll put Tez Walker up there because they need a receiver to step up. He's a guy that I think could be better in the pros. Maybe it's not right away, uh, but then he was in college. He, he has, he looks the part, um, and he has the trait. The traits are the part because he has freaky speed and really good length, really good length. He has the length of a guy that's a receiver that's like one of the bigger receivers in this class. He has, he has more length than those guys, most of those guys actually. Um, so if he comes in and develops pretty quickly, um, he can be a stud. So uh, some guys to watch there for, for the Baltimore Ravens. It's really about staying healthy. Bears, obvious one, got to go with their number one overall pick. Uh, their, their quarterback, their starting quarterback, Caleb Williams, who uh, will obviously make some noise. He'll be very, very productive, uh, mainly through the air, but also could be on the ground and scrambling and just making highlight plays. And he could have his ups and downs. He's a rookie, and uh, you know it's going to be a lot different than the you – know, playing the Pac-12, and I guess sometimes he would struggle playing against the better competition, so that's kind of that hurdle that, you know, the learning curve he has to get over, but I think he's going to be very solid with the Bears' weapons, and he's going to be tough to game plan for. And then another one to watch out for, their other first-round picks. So it's pretty obvious here with the Bears, but Roma Dunze should be pretty productive uh, right away. Like, the future of, you know, the Bears haven't had too many good receivers in in their franchise history, probably because the quarterback play uh, but a Dunze, like starting off in the Bears here, if he ends up being a Bear for his career, like that could end up being the best Bears receiver of all time. I really think he can do that. So I think he has a good shot at that, actually. Um, so some two big-time rookies to watch. Vikings, tough call because they have two first-round picks as, as well. And and you could easily go with the quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. He's got some really good weapons to distribute the ball to, and he can run as well. Uh, I'm going to go Dallas Turner. This was a tough call because do they start Sam Darnold right away? So that was, and they very well could. So uh, Dallas Turner is the favorite for defensive rookie of the year, I think for a reason. I mean, he's most people's best pass rusher in the class, uh, you know, was always productive and he should be really productive in Brian Flores' defense. I think he'll, he could be, even though they have Jonathan Gerrard in there, I think Turner could be their, their best pass rusher out there. So I go with him, but it very easily could be McCarthy. You kind of got a battle there, but you have a defensive guy at the top and then an offensive guy. So, um, that works out. Uh, for the Packers, I go Edger and Cooper, linebacker from Texas A&M. Uh, they had a couple options as well. Jordan Morgan should be re- – like the Packers are really good developing offensive linemen, and he, he's he's going to be pretty solid for them. And it, they said they can move him anywhere. They feel comfortable with that. And that, yeah, wherever he plays, I, I think, you know, he'll be, so- he'll be he will be solid. But I could put uh, Javon Bullard up here as well. I think he'd be really good safety that, you know, plays a lot from the slot. Uh, but I gotta go Cooper. I gotta go Cooper. They need a starting linebacker. They're gonna plug him in. They're gonna they're gonna start him. And this is a guy that's gonna get in the backfield, get pressure on the quarterback on blitzes, get sacks. He's gonna make. A, he's gonna rack up a lot of tackles. He's gonna and he's gonna cover pretty well. He might get his hands on the ball a bit. So this guy's it's a guy that's gonna be high motor and kind of fill up the stat sheet. So kind of a rookie of the year type guy for the Packers. Uh, Lions gonna go bolt their corners. Why not? Terry and Arnold, who was my number one corner in the class. Um, could be their best corner right away. They do have a good veteran in Carlton Davis, but Arnold's very solid. I'm, this is, this is a pretty easy one, but even for the next one, I go with another corner and it's Rakestraw. Like, even though it might be, you know, he might be on the bench right away. Like, I think he'll get some reps. I think he's good enough day one. Just about, he's really like, he's a first round talent, probably like a late first round talent. If he was, if there was no durability concern. So he's that talented. So they probably find a way to play him. Um, but something I don't know if I remember, I, I don't think I mentioned actually, like when we were like recapping and grading the draft. Uh, I mean, I did love what the Lions did and I did love Terry and Arnold pick, but what I love with the Lions, what I love about the Lions draft here with, with these two guys specifically is they didn't, you know, they're just not afraid to take like the best player on their board. They're not worried about going certain positions. So many times there's teams that kind of, get stuck in like, all right, we love this guy because he's a fit and he's going to be there for us. So we're taking him no matter what. Then a surprise player drops to them and they don't take them because they kind of just, they kind of, you know, made themselves think they have to take this other guy. And it's funny because rakes are like everybody in their mother, their grandmother, 
thought that the Lions and Rake Straw were like connected. Like that's a Lions guy there. So and it ended up being the case. Like they liked him a lot. But hey, Terry and Arnold drops them. He's not supposed to drop to them in the first round. And they have to take that best player available. That's what they did. And then you come around in the second round, it's like, hey, here's our guy. Rake Straw is still here. Um, we already took a corner, but this guy is our guy and, and, and he's the best player available right now. I think we got to take him. They take him. I respect the hell out of that. That's kind of my philosophy as well. Do not pass on great players that you really like, um, you know, just because you already took that other position or don't, you know, don't be afraid to take a guy that you did not do it that much homework on because you didn't think you were going to be able to get him. You know, so I, I love what Brad Holmes is doing in the draft. Uh, and they double up on some really good corners here. Uh, Titans, got to go with J.C. Latham. Uh, a lot of people don't like J.C. Latham. I, I think he's going to be really good for the Titans. Uh, Callahan, one of the better offensive line coaches in football. I think he's going to be really good. I think he's going to be their best offensive lineman this year. If you know, Peter Skaronsky going to be really good. But tackle stand out a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to go Latham. Watch out for Devondre Sweat. I really want to go Devondre Sweat because I'm a huge Devondre Sweat guy. Um, but... He's a guy that's not going to fill out the stat sheet. Um, I mean, he'll rack up tackles in the run game, but he's not going to go crazy when it comes to the stat sheet. That's because he's a guy that creates for his teammates. Like he swallows blockers. He takes on double teams and because you have to double that, a guy that size that can move like that. Um, so he's more of an impact player than the stats will show. Cedric Gray you could go as well because he's probably going to start at linebacker, and he, he – uh, he lights up the stat sheet, actually. But so the Titans have some good options as well. I think J.C. Latham's going to be really good for them. I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Colts got some two top options here. I'll go with Latu. It's the most pro-ready pass rusher, the most polished when it comes to technique in different moves. So he should be able to be a plug-and-play uh, and be productive. And the Colts, they got some pass rushers, but they didn't really have that like guy that's like you can't replace. So I, I really think they'll play. They'll start lot to um, a bookum and pay are all right. I, I think we're going to see who's going to get the most snaps. I think it'd probably be lot to and a bookum. Uh, and then Mitchell is such a talented receiver that he should be productive. It's a little deeper of a run. Michael Pittman, who's obviously their number one. Uh, and obviously Josh Downs is their main guy in the slot. So it's Mitchell and Pierce kind of battling for that other outside. And they'll, they'll rotate, but uh, who's going to get majority snaps on the outside? I, I'm way more of an AD Mitchell guy, but uh, we'll see. So I think that's kind of the difference between Mitchell and Latu there. Uh, on They both got a split, I guess, but I think Latu get a lot more snaps. Uh, the Jags this is an obvious one. I think if Brian Thomas Jr. does not win their rookie of the year, I think, you know, what the hell happened? Something went wrong, you know? Um, Cause they don't, they have a lot of, they draft a lot of upside guys for the most part. Like Mason Smith, I like, and he could be decent right away. You got a pretty good room over there on the D line, um, but that'd be my next bet. But it's got to be Brian Thomas Jr. should be pretty product. Should be pretty productive for placing Calvin Ridley and having Trevor Lawrence throw to him. Like he should be really fun to watch this year. Texans, I'm going to go a corner. Kamari Lasser, who could play outside or inside for them. I think we could see both. Um, you know, I, I you know I don't think that we're going to see him stuck in one spot. Uh, but I think it's not a big deal if it is, and it could be the case. And, uh, and then another one to watch for is Kalen Bullock, so a pair of DBs because they could use another safety, and you got a playmaker guy here. You got his issue is like kind of tackling and taking himself out of plays, but he's a really good playmaker. You know, reading the quarterback, get his, you know, getting uh, being rangy and getting his hands on the ball. Um, so if he racks up some interceptions, he could be that guy. Uh, I just don't know how many snaps we're going to get. I think Lasser gets – I think it's a lot of snaps from the slot. But I think we'll see some reps on the outside as well. Um, so he should be pretty solid for them. Panthers, uh, tough battle between their two offensive guys. I'll go Jonathan Brooks. And I know he's uh, coming off an ACL tear in no November. But I think he's going to be good to go. And they do have a deep running back room. But he's the best one. He's a home run hitting guy. Um, I think he's going to be really productive. And if you got a running back that's productive, like they they win awards. You know, they, they win awards. So... I think he'll be their rookie of the year. And like it could have is I think he's going to have flashy games and he has some quiet games because they can go to Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen pretty easily. Um, but uh, I think like it would be pretty solid as well. But I feel more comfortable going with Jonathan Brooks. Uh, for the Falcons, they got, you got some unusual choices maybe. Well, maybe I say that because it's not their first or second round picks here. But I like Braylon Trice. I, they kind of have a hole at the edge position. At the end of the day, he could be their best pass rusher. They're the most productive pass rusher. Uh, and he's not... Super flashy in terms of the traits, but he was just always getting home. He's always productive, and he's an impact player, so he should be that for the Falcons and Raheem Morris' defense as well. And 
Uh, I actually want Brandon Dorless here in the next one. I love Brandon Dorless. I think you can plug him in at, at multiple different spots, uh, and and he'll be a playmaker. I mean, he's really good at reading the quarterback, getting his like getting the, getting the pass deflections as well. Um, it's just going to depend on how much they play him right away. But I was a huge Brandon Dorless fan, so I'd watch out for him. So it's kind of some sneaky choices for the Falcons there. Saints got to go to lineman Taliese Fuaga, who's a good fit for them. He's a plug-and-play guy. He's going to be their best offense lineman right away with, with Ramchek still dealing with, dealing with an injury. So it's a pretty obvious one. Kool-Aid McKinstry, which I love, really good value pick. They're just so damn deep in terms of corner, um, you know, unless, unless they uh, trade Lattimore, which there were some rumors about that. Uh, a couple months ago. I, I don't think it happens now, but I guess they could. But um, Debo is really good, and um, uh, Alante Taylor uh, I think is pretty underrated, pretty solid as well. So they, they got some guys there. So that's a that's probably one of the deeper cornerback rooms you'll see. But Kool-Aid McKinstry is like a pro-ready guy. Like he's always been good. He's really smart. So um, if he starts, like, yeah, he could be in, in, in a conversation defensive rookie of the year. Bucks. Not like a super obvious one here for them. I'll just go with you know, a guy that's like, I think Graham Barton, I think it is obvious actually, the more I think about it, um, is because he's far and away going to be the biggest impact out of their rookie class here. Um, and I know I have Bucky Irving. I think they'll use him a little bit. Um, you know, he's a explosive dude. He doesn't have like the long speed, but he's explosive. He'll break tackles. He can catch the ball. So he can be pretty productive in there with Rashad, with Rashad White. Chargers, yeah, Joel Alt's gonna be super good. He's such like a, he's an elite prospect, but I, I you almost have to go Lad McConkey in a rookie of the year type situation because he's probably gonna be their best receiver as long as he's healthy. Because some people had some durability concerns with him, but uh, he's gonna be open because he can run routes and he's pretty good after the catch. Herbert's gonna give him the ball. He got a really good quarterback, so he's gonna be super productive so I think you gotta go McConkey even though they got a great one in Joe Alt uh Junior Colson's other one he could be their best linebacker and he, we know he fits that that Michigan staff defense you know so I, he'll be pretty solid too so Chargers got some options because they got good players but I do think a lot of it is they had some major major holes where whoever they were going to get for those positions were just they're going to play a lot right away uh, Broncos, two Oregon guys here. Going to go Troy Franklin. I didn't hesitate with that one. I think Troy Franklin is easily going to be their second best receiver, actually, um, behind Cortland Sutton, unless they trade Cortland Sutton, but I don't think they will at this point. Um, Franklin's going to be productive. He's going to get open. Going to have flashy plays. He has his, his Oregon quarterback throwing to him. Uh, the next one, it was a little tough because I do think Bo Nick could struggle. Um, so you could go with uh, Audric Estime because there could be injuries at the running back position, and he's really solid as well. Uh, I think Chris Abrams drain has the potential to start some games for them at corner. Uh, but, uh, you know, Bo Nix will distribute the ball. He's going to be their quarterback. So I felt good about him putting him in that, like, the the next best uh, option for their rookie of the year. Raiders going to go with Brock Bowers. Yeah, it's a little tight of a tight end room with Michael Mayer in there as well. But Brock Bowers is that good where he's, you're going to want to get him in there. You're going to want to create plays for him to get the ball uh, in space, and he's going to move the sticks. So got to go with him. Uh, watching out for a corner that could actually get some playing time for them as Decamarian Richardson, which I do view as more of like a you know upside guy. So maybe perfect world he's not playing a you don't throw him in there right away, but um, he could have a, he could have a better NFL career than than college. So uh, I got to watch for them. Chiefs, I think pretty easy. Go Xavier Worthy. You know they're going to use him a bit because they needed receivers and he fits. Chiefs ball, Mahomes ball, and and they're when they kind of do their gadget type plays. He fits that as well. They're going to give him the ball. Uh, he's going to make big plays. He's going to show off that speed. And Rasheed Rice might miss some time due to suspension, so that kind of helps Worthy as well. But even if Rice was in there, I think you'd still pick Worthy. I watch out for Kamal Hayden, the Tennessee corner, who had a really good year. He was really bad two years ago. This year he broke out like, whoa, what was that? Um, you know, So he, he might be something. Chiefs are not only really good at drafting, they're really good at drafting corners, DBs, and they're really good at coaching and developing them, and they needed one as well. They always got some under-the-radar guy playing right away and making an impact. I know McDuffie wasn't really an under-the-radar guy, but the other guys all were. Uh, so watch out for Hayden being good. I think he's a fit, a scheme fit. Like a lot of his strengths in Tennessee, um, I think kind of fits that. A lot of cover two and two-man under, you know, Chiefs, Chiefs defense and Spagnuolo's defense. So watch out for Kamal Hayden right away. Uh, Cardinals, they got two really good options. They got probably more than two really good options with Darius Robinson as well. 
Uh, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is the obvious one. It's about staying healthy with, with him. Wasn't really labeled like a big concern for him, but I've heard some people say yeah, they worry about like little things popping up with him. So that's the thing like got us to healthy because he could be a star right away for in as many stars as there are for receivers in the NFL. Like right away, he could be that guy with Kyler Murray. Uh, and then Max Melton, who I love, I think he could be one of the better rookie corners right away. Would not surprise me. Um, he's going to play outside and inside. Uh, for for uh, Jonathan Gannon and his defense. He's going to be a playmaker. He's going to be really solid. Um, so watch out for Max Melton as well. Seahawks, obvious one. Go Byron Murphy the second. And then you go uh, offensive lineman. Christian Haynes was a really good pick. I think it's a plug-and-play guard from UConn. Really enjoyed watching him the last two years. Uh, you know, so he... Uh, yeah, he's going to be good for them. Like, I think, I think he's starting right away. He should be starting right away. He should be really solid. So, and Byron Murphy is the obvious one. He's going to tear it up. And he was, the, he was my number one defensive player in the draft. This guy's going to stop the run. He's going to collapse the pocket. Going to get after the quarterback. Mike McDonald, really good at coaching these types of guys. Maybe the best in football. Um, so, he's going to be really solid right away. And obvious one, a serious candidate for defensive rookie of the year. Rams, I'll go Jared Verse. Uh, I, I, he's going to start, and I think he'd be pretty productive. Byron Young was pretty productive from him last year. Uh, I, I, you know, I think guys did get some help with Aaron Donald being out there, so Verse doesn't really get that help. Uh, but I, I think he'll be productive. He'll be solid for them, so I'll go with him. Um, and you could go Braden Fisk as well, but Blake Corum. You know, Kyron Williams is great. He just had an injury pop up every year so far, and he's a little undersized, even though he doesn't play like it at all. But that kind of... Having durability because they're being undersized doesn't really go together too well. And then he's actually already dealt with a foot or ankle thing start, like this early in the offseason too. So uh, Corum's a guy that I don't think he's going to have a lengthy um, career where he's going to be like a star on the back end of his career. I think he's going to be – his best ball is going to be – I mean, running backs are kind of like that as it is. But I think his best ball is going to be like the first two years. Like if we look at his career at the end, I think it's going to be the first couple of years and he's going to be really solid. While the mileage doesn't, is a lot of mileage for a college player right now, but it's still not super high in terms of a football player, like an NFL player. So, and then what Williams dealing with his injuries, I think Corn be pretty productive. It could, we could put him at the top there again. Like we said, like I said, we could put Fisk up there as well. Uh, and then, 49ers are going Ricky Pierce. At, at this time, they still have Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and it feels like they'll hang on to him. We'll see. Uh, but even with those guys, I like Pearsaw because it's something they don't have. I've talked about it before. It's what makes this pick very, very intriguing. And they didn't really have – they have guys that are very capable of playing in the slot. They just, like, don't really use them there. Like, when when they do line up there, like, they, they're not – like, Kittle as a move tight end, like, it, it'll when he's used like that, he's productive there. But, like, Ayuk and Debo Samuel do not play in the slot – nearly as much as you think and when they do line up there they really don't give them the ball so you get a guy that is polished polished as a slot receiver that's where he makes his money one of my favorite comparisons in this entire draft was Ricky Pearsall and Adam Thielen uh two like little not super lengthy but little lengthier guys for the slot incredible hands hands incredible route runners they move exactly alike so it's something they do not have so they are going to find a way to use that new type of player so I'll go Ricky Pearsall and then watch out for Renardo Green, which is going to be interesting too because um, the knock on him was how will he be in zone coverage because he he wasn't nearly as good. He was so good in man. Like if man coverage was the only thing that existed, he would have been like a top 10 pick, you know, but there's way more zone coverage than man in the NFL. So he has still has to develop in that. So, But the Niners are tweaking their defense a little bit. They've been primarily zone, even though Wilkes played a bit more man than they, than they did in the past. Uh, but do they run a lot more, man? You know, so interesting. So there's a chance that Green, like, starts for them and is really solid, or the chance they just don't play him much in year one because they want him to learn more, more zones. So that's a tricky one. Um, I almost put – I did actually put Dominic Pooney, and I changed it because I think Green could start. Uh, but Pooney probably going to start, and he could play guard or tackle for them. You know, so that's they got some options. That's a good thing. They got some options to for their rookie of the year. But that's gonna wrap it up. If you would change any, let me know in the comments. Obviously, it's pretty opinion based. Some of these are pretty obvious. Uh, but always talking to you guys, especially on Twitter. More videos like this. Uh, every team's breakout player, every team's best player, like leading up to the season. All kinds of content on the channel. Go check it out. Uh, GLD, GLD shop, Liquid IV, Code Goat. Those are our sponsors. Check it out. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. That's gonna do it. Thanks for watching.
Goodbye.